This is Timothy with KiboMed, and in this video series, we will describe the contents of the Chison D300 user manual, specific details that are important to know about the AD300, and also how to operate it will be explained and shown for reference purposes. This is a quick and overall look at the design of the AD300. The overall dimensions are approximately 12 inches in width, 16 and 3 quarters inches in length, and 14 inches in height. The monitor is a 10 inch CRT. The contrast and brightness can be controlled by each of the control knobs found on the bottom of the monitor. Let's identify what is found on the back of the ultrasound. Starting at the top, there is a strong carrying handle. To the left are two probe holders and to the right is a holder for ultrasound gel. It also features a pro cord hanger and cord organizer. Now below on each side are ventilation windows. In the first column of the ports is a power switch. Next is a ground connector. And at the bottom are two USB ports. The second column has the power cord socket and a VGA port. The third column has two fuses and a remote connector. And the last column has a video out port, a foot switch port, and a LAN port. Here's an overall look at the keyboard. More specifics of functions and features are covered in a later video. Before installing the power cords, probes, or other accessories, it is important to consider the environmental conditions that the ultrasound will be operated under. The working environment should have an approximate temperature range of 5 degrees to 40 degrees Celsius or 41 degrees to 104 degrees Fahrenheit and a relative humidity range of approximately 30% to 80% with no condensation. The ideal atmospheric pressure would range from approximately 700 to 1060 HPA. Strong radiation sources or powerful electromagnetic waves may result in image ghosting or noise. The system should be isolated from such radiation sources or electromagnetic waves. Transportation and storage of the 8300 is best if it is kept within the system tolerances. The approximate temperature range should be negative 5 degrees to 40 degrees Celsius or 23 degrees to 104 degrees Fahrenheit and a relative humidity of 30% to 80% with no condensation. The atmospheric pressure would range from approximately 86 to 106 kPa. It is important to make sure that the AC voltage matches the power requirements indicated on the system's label. Connecting the system to the wrong power supply may cause damage to the system and danger to the operators and patients. It is important to use the power cable that is provided to ensure proper function. The power cable that is provided is a three-wire cable and uses a three-pin grounded plug, which has a grounding terminal. Follow these simple steps to connect electricity to the ultrasound. Step number one, 
connect the plug of the power cord to the AC power in socket at the rear panel of the system. Step number two, connect the other end of the power cord into the AC power supply socket. The 8300 also has an equal potential terminal that is used to equalize the grounding terminals between the system and other electronic equipment that may be connected to the system. Now we're going to consider the proper installation procedure of the probes. Remember, it's important to only use the probes that are provided by the manufacturer for the 8300. The first step is to make sure that the unit is turned off. Step two, open the probe box and carefully check the probe lens, the cable, and the connector to make sure that it is in proper working condition. Step number three, Put the probe lock knob to open status and make sure that the small tongue of the probe lock inside the probe connector is at the same position of the slot on the probe socket. Step number four, make sure that the probe cord is facing toward the back of the machine and horizontally insert the probe connector into the probe socket. Hold the probe connector and turn the lock knob to the lock position. Step number five, check the probe and make sure it is securely connected. Let's now review the proper way to remove the probe from the system. First, turn off the unit and put the probe head inside of the probe holder. Second, turn the lock knob in the counterclockwise direction to the open position and then remove the probe carefully from the probe socket. We're going to now see how to properly install a video printer to the 8300 by following these simple steps. Step number one, put the video printer beside the main unit or on the video printer shelf if you are using a trolley. Step two, connect one terminal of the video cable to the video in socket at the rear panel of the video printer. Connect the other terminal of the video cable to the video out socket at the rear panel of the ultrasound. Step 3. If using a remote control for the printer, connect one terminal of the remote control cord to the remote terminal in the rear panel of the video printer. Connect the other terminal of the remote control cord to the remote port at the rear panel of the ultrasound. Step 4. Connect the power cord to the rear panel of the video printer. Next, connect the power cord of the video printer to the power socket. Then turn on the video printer. In step number five, adjust the parameters for the video printer accordingly. The printer is now ready to print. For more details, refer to the user manual of the video printer.